Hello, I am Seamus Donahue of Eve University, and this video is about tracking disruption. Now, tracking disruption is the third type of electronic warfare that I'm going to talk about. Unlike the first two forms of e-war, ECM jamming and sensor dampening, uh, tracking disruption does not work on the enemy's ability to establish or maintain a target lock. Rather, tracking disruption interferes with the enemy's ability uh, to shoot other things. Basically, it interferes with the enemy's turrets and the enemy's missiles. And if you're returning to EVE Online from a long absence, yes, there are now tracking disruptors for missile systems. Right. So like the other forms of electronic warfare, tracking disruption and guidance disruption modules are also mid-slot modules, just like any other form of electronic warfare. Uh, the tracking disruptors interfere with the with certain attributes on enemy turrets the optimal range the fall off range and the tracking speed and again here is my alt in the raven battleship and this time i actually have it fitted out with weapons for this video uh, so if i show info on the railguns fit to this raven battleship uh, these are 425 millimeter railguns tech 2 and it's got an optimal range of 36 kilometers, an accuracy fall off of 30 kilometers, and a weapon accuracy score of about 1.26. Basically, what this means is that it can hit a stationary target, or at least stationary relative to the Raven, every single time as long as the target is within 36 kilometers. If the target is beyond 36 kilometers, but it's still stationary, then the chance to hit starts to drop. So at optimal plus fall off, or 36 plus 30 kilometers, or 66 kilometers out, it's going to hit one half the time. Uh, at optimal plus two times fall off, so 36 plus 30 plus 30, so 96 kilometers out, it's going to hit one time out of 16. At optimal plus three fall off, so in other words, we're out at 126 kilometers now, it's going to hit once every 512 times. Right. Uh, for details on the probability calc uh, on the hit probability calculation, I will refer you to the EVE University wiki for turret damage. The weapon accuracy score describes the turret's ability to deal with a moving target. And as a shorthand, it's best thought of as uh, how many milliradians per second can this weapon track a frigate? Basically, mil uh, radians are a unit of angular measure. Approximately, one radian is about 57 point something degrees. There's about six po approximately 6.28 radians in a full circle. So the higher the weapon accuracy score, the better the weapon is able to deal with a moving target. So this railgun can deal with 40 meter frigates moving around the turret at 1.26 milliradians per second. Uh, the Arbitrator cruiser that I'm flying has a signature radius of 130 meters, so that's a little more than three times bigger. So these guns can deal with an Arbitrator cruiser moving around uh, at about, about three times this, so about 3.6, 3.7, 3.8 milliradians per second, something like that. Uh, by the way, in your... Here, let me actually get my Arbitrator moving. Right, it's going to have it orbit the Raven battleship at 50 kilometers radius. And the angular velocity is one of the columns you can add to your overview. Right? And this is in radians per second. So given that my arbitrator is going at about 249, 250 meters per second and is 50,000 meters away, the angular velocity of the arbitrator going around the Raven is about 4.9 milliradians per second. So that's just high enough that it's going to give these uh, railguns some trouble trying to hit that arbitrator, but they can still do it. Uh, hold on, let me challenge myself to a duel here. And open fire. Hold on, let me add myself to a watch list. There we are. It might help if I actually target locked the arbitrator.
All right, so my rail guns are somewhat able to start hitting that arbitrator. So the track, uh, the limitation on the angular velocity that I was just talking about is not a hard limit. Uh, it acts kind of like the fall off. So when I say that these guns, uh, hold on, let me actually make sure I show info on the module. So weapon accuracy score of 1.263, where's my calculator? So if it can deal with a 40 meter frigate at 1.263 milliradians per second, it can deal with a armor trader cruiser at about 4.1, right? So when I say it can deal with, it's kind of analogous to saying optimal plus fall off. So if my arbitrator were circling my Raven battleship at exactly 4.1 milliradians per second instead of 4.9 as it is right now, uh, then the guns, and assuming that the arbitrator were within optimal range, the guns would have a one half chance to hit. If the arbitrator were going around at twice that much, at 8.2 milliradians per second, uh, either it's running an afterburner to get up to that speed, or it's orbiting closer than 50 kilometers, then the chance to hit would drop to 1 in 16. And if I can get the angular velocity up to three times this, so about 12.3 milliradians per second, then the guns will only hit once every 500 out of every 512 shots. Alright, so that's turrets in a nutshell. Uh, let's move on to the actual weapon uh, tracking disruptors. So the railgun has this optimal range, this fall off, this weapon accuracy score. So these numbers dictate a uh, part of the calculation of how likely I am I to actually hit that thing. Uh, this is where the tracking disruptors come in. All right, so if I activate, if I target lock the battleship, first of all. And where is that battleship? There it is. So if I target lock the Raven battleship and I activate a tracking disruptor, that starts to interfere with the numbers. And let me refresh the show information window here. So now when I show info on my guns, uh, the optimal range has dropped to about 25.36 kilometers. The accuracy fall off has dropped to 21.14 kilometers, and the weapon accuracy score has dropped to 0 0.89. So, this Raven battleship will now, it, the rail guns on this Raven battleship will now hit a stationary target about half the time, out at roughly 46 kilometers. The arbitrator is slightly further away than that. Additionally, the arbitrator is not stationary it's moving. So now if I try to open fire, most of the time I'm not going to do anything. More than half of the shots that I'm firing miss. All right. So that's what tracking disruption does for you. The enemy won't be able to hit you from as far away, and it won't be able to deal with targets that are moving around it quickly in circles. Now, like sensor dampeners, tracking disruptors can also be scripted. Right? They can be scripted to focus on uh, the enemy's optimal and falloff range. So let's load the optimal range disruption script. And when I do that, the unscripted module takes off some of the falloff, some of the optimal, some of the tracking speed. Tracking speed, also known as weapon accuracy score. If I script it for optimal range disruption, it's going to focus on taking away optimal and fall off range, but it's not going to do anything to the tracking speed. Uh, conversely, if I script the other one for tracking speed, it's going to focus on taking away tracking speed, so it can't deal with targets moving around it in circles, uh, but it's not going to do anything to the optimal or fall off range. So if I activate one module, focusing on the optimal range disruption. Let's actually look at the railgun now. 
the weapon accuracy score is back up to its normal value of 1.26, whereas the optimal range is down to 14.7 kilometers, and the falloff is down to 12.27 kilometers. These guns can now only hit a stationary target guaranteed out 14.73 kilometers away. They will hit a stationary target half the time at, uh, what's one plus the other? Uh, doing this in my head. About 27 kilometers. So it's only going to hit a stationary target about half the time, 27 kilometers away. If the target is 39.27 kilometers away, it's only going to hit one chance out of 16. And that arbitrator is much further out than that. So it's going to be very rare that I'm going to actually hit that arbitrator from this far away. As with sensor dampening, tracking disruption is stacking penalized. And here you have three attributes on the turret that are getting separate stacking pen penalties calculations. So you've got uh, stacking penalties on the optimal range, on the accuracy falloff, and on the weapon accuracy score. And each of these three attributes have two stacking penalties calculations, one for harmful effects, one for beneficial effects. Yes, that is six different stacking penalties calculations that can occur for the turrets on a single ship. So I have on here uh, tracking computers in my mid slots. All right? And again, the tracking computers can themselves be scripted to boost the optimal range and fall off or scripted to boost the tracking speed. Right? All right, so if I turn these on, uh, again, the first and third modules are involved in stacking penalties calculations for turret optimal range and fall off, whereas the second and third modules are involved in stacking penalty calculations for the turret's weapon accuracy score. Let me show info on my guns again. So now being the subject of tracking disruption and tracking computers, right? My guns have recovered a little bit, but not completely. Optimal range of 18 kilometers, fall off of 18 kilometers, weapon accuracy score of about 1.85. Right. Uh, you know what? Let me actually turn on the other tracking disruptor. And now my guns have dropped to a weapon accuracy score of 0 0.76, approximately. If there were multiple ships uh, tracking disrupting this Raven at the same time, all those different tracking disruptor modules would be put into the same stacking penalties calculation, uh, in into the same set of stacking penalties calculations, because they're all working against the same single Raven battleship here, or whatever ship it is that you're all tracking disrupting all at once. So more than, say, four or five modules for any given attribute is probably not doing you much good. Uh, so that's tracking disruption. About a couple of years ago, uh, and just for reference, today is Saturday, September the 10th, 2016, and I'm on the Singularity test server, build 1072737. About a couple of years ago, I think, Crowd Control Productions introduced the Guidance Disruptors. Prior to the introduction of the Guidance Disruptors, tracking disruption only affected enemy turrets. Missile users did not care, because it didn't do anything whatsoever to missiles. Now, missiles are a slightly different ball of wax from turrets. So, uh, let me drag missiles over this slot. So, if I fire missiles at that arbitrator, so here I have a set of rapid heavy missile launchers. Yeah, you can see the shields going down. So that would be the shield alarm, or that might be the armor. Which alarm was that? Ah, yes, the shield alarm. So, rapid heavy missile launchers are battleship-sized modules that fire long-range cruiser-sized missiles. Right? Uh, now, there's a wide variety of 
uh, missile launchers and missiles uh, based on the size of the missile, whether it's long or short range for the intended hull size, so on and so forth. But all missiles have the following properties. They'll do some amount of damage. They have a maximum traveling velocity. That's how much distance they can cover per second. Uh, they have a flight time. So these Scourge Heavy Missiles can travel 6.45 kilometers per second and can travel for 9.1 seconds before they die because they ran out of fuel. Once they run out of fuel, once their flight time is expired, that's it. They don't do any harm whatsoever. 6.45 times 9.1... So they can travel a maximum of 58.7 kilometers. You might want to include a little fudge factor into that, because if the target is moving, the missiles are going to wind up traveling along a curve, because missiles don't know how to lead their target. So if the target's moving off to the left, the missiles uh, aren't going to try to predict that and move off to the left early. They're just going to head straight in the direction of wherever the target is away from them. So if the target's moving fast enough, they can lead missiles, incoming missiles, on a curved path, and the missiles might run out of uh, flight time. So maximum flight time multiplied by maximum velocity is your best case scenario here. Uh, but missiles also have something called an explosion radius and an explosion velocity. And just as a warning, explosion radius is not what it sounds like. Uh, this is not a radius of effect. Missiles do not affect multiple targets. These are not bombs. These are not smart bombs. I will not be discussing bombs or smart bombs in this video. Explosion radius and explosion velocity are instead abstract parameters that say, I do diluted damage to targets based on their size and speed. The only way this Scourge Heavy Missile is going to do its advertised damage of 191.7 hit points is if the kinetic resistances are zero, targets move in slower than 121 meters per second, and the target is bigger than 105 meters signature radius. If all three of those things are true, then yes, this missile will do 191 hit points of damage. Right. Two of those things, of course, are false, so it's not doing the full damage. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you'll notice that of all the various missiles that I fired, I only knocked the shields down uh, to zero, and I didn't even touch the armor. The armor was not even scratched. There's just a bare sliver of shields remaining, if you might remember. Right. Uh, which would suggest that the shields only took about seven missiles worth of damage. If Assuming that we believe this number, it only took about maybe seven missiles worth of damage at most, and I fired more like 20 missiles. Right? So that's how explosion rate resistances, explosion radius, and explosion velocity can reduce the amount of damage taken from missiles. Now, keep in mind explosion radius and explosion velocity. This is where the guidance disruptors come in. So the guidance disruptors will interfere with an enemy's missile systems. They will reduce the explosion radius and explosion velocity. They can also reduce the flight time and missile velocity. And again, these things can be scripted. If I leave it unscripted and I activate this, it's going to do a little of everything. Uh, by the way, when uh, for these parameters, instead of showing info on the railguns, for the missile case, you want to show info on the charges. You want to show info on the missiles themselves rather than the launcher. So now that I've shown info again on the missiles, that updates the show info window. Uh, and the explosion velocity has dropped to 96 meters per second. The explosion radius has increased to 126 meters. Now the target has to be even bigger and slower in order to take full damage from the missile. Additionally, it's lost some of its flight time, and it's lost some of its traveling velocity. So it's only going to live for 7.7 .7 seconds, and the missile's only going to go 5.4 kilometers per second, which is not enough for the missiles to actually catch up 
to that arbitrator. So the missiles can only go out 41 kilometers, and the arbitrator is 50 kilometers away. The missiles are not going to catch up to that thing. So, so launching my missiles now... Yeah, let me hide some of this. So launching my missiles now, those missiles are just sputtering out and dying before they even reach the arbitrator. Right? But even if they were able to catch the arbitrator, the arbitrator would only be taking diluted damage. Right? Uh, here, let me actually approach. Let me get these two ships to approach each other. Let's make them closer. Right? So... I'll demonstrate uh, the explosion velocity and explosion radius in a moment. But again, like with the tracking disruptors, the guidance disruptors can be scripted and stacking penalties come into play. Right? So I can set one of them to focus on the missile range aspect. Right? So missile velocity and missile flight time. Uh, I can script the other to focus on missile precision. So this will penalize the enemy's explosion radius and explosion velocity. All right. Uh, you know what? This is good at close enough for what I'm going to demonstrate. So let me script both of these for miss missile precision. Let me show you what happens in the following two cases. So if I fire these missiles without any guidance disruption whatsoever, if I start firing missiles, one, two, three. All right. And the shields went down. All right. Uh, you know what? That's probably not a good... I'm about to hit the... Let me hit the armor. One, two... So let's do two volleys against the armor and see what that looks like. Let me do two more volleys. Alright, so that's four volleys of missiles I've shot at the Arbitrator. And you can see how much the armor has dropped. Now I'm down to 79% armor. I've lost one-fifth of my armor. Let me turn on the Guidance Disruptors, and if we now show info on the charges this time, now the Scourge Heavy Missiles have an explosion radius of 201 meters and an explosion velocity of 45.7 meters per second. The explosion velocity is irrelevant at the moment because the Arbitrator is not moving. Uh, you know what, let me actually get the Arbitrator moving. So I show info, so explosion velocity 45.7 meters per second, explosion radius 201 meters. So the arbitrator is going to take diluted damage because it's moving faster than this, and it's smaller than this. Remember, our arbitrator has a 130 meter signature radius, but it's now being compared to an explosion radius of 201 meters. So now if I fire four volleys of missiles, There we go. A module has run out of charges. It wiped out the shields, but the armor has only dropped to 77%. Now, now of course, the shields did take uh, some of the brunt of those last four volleys, uh, but you remember the shields only have 40% kinetic damage resistance, so the armor has barely moved at all. Uh, so that, and that's because the damage done by these heavy missiles was diluted. Right? So, all right, we've loaded. Let's fire this again. So now it's 75%, 74%. 73%. So that's barely going down at all. If I turn off the guidance disruption, however, hmm, I expected that to going down. There we go. Now it's going down significantly faster. 
So now that the guidance disruptors have been turned off, those missiles are doing a lot more damage. That's because their explosion radius and explosion velocity haven't been penalized. All right. So that's tracking disruption and that's guidance disruption. Uh, let me cover, before I go on to talking about the ships that are bonused for this, uh, let me first talk about uh, the optimal and falloff range effects. So turrets are not the only modules that have an optimal range and a falloff range. All of the different electronic warfare modules also have an optimal and a falloff. Uh, so if I happen to have an ECM jammer fitted to the Raven battleship here. Uh, so it's got an optimal range, and of course the Raven's not bonused for this. So it's got an optimal range of 40 kilometers and uh, a fall off of 45 kilometers. What these numbers mean in terms of electronic warfare, for ECM jammers specifically, it's going to create another multiplier. If you watch the ECM jamming video, uh, the probability for a jam cycle to succeed is the jam strength, in this case 4.32, divided by the sensor strength of the target, that's 18. So if I grab my calculator, 4.32 divided by 18, so that's a 24% chance to jam the target on every 20 second cycle. Uh, if the target were uh, at optimal plus fall off away, so the target's not with, if the target's not within optimal range, if it's instead 85 kilometers out, then there's going to be a one-half multiplier that comes into this. So instead of having a 24% chance to jam, my module would only have a 12.5% chance to jam. All right. In the case of sensor dampeners, tracking disruptors, and I'll talk about target painters in the next video, uh, in the case of the other forms of electronic warfare, uh, if the target, here, let me actually show info on this. My guidance disruptor has an optimal range of 72 kilometers. So everything I just talked about, all these numbers are going to be the same uh, as long as the target is, as long as the Raven is closer than 72 kilometers uh, to my arbitrator. But if the Raven were at 72 plus 36, if it were at 108 kilometers out, of course, I'd have to run sensor boosters to target lockout at 108 kilometers. But if I ran some sensor boosters uh, and the Raven were at 108 kilometers, then at optimal plus fall off, these penalties would only be half of what's advertised. So instead of this module, I have it scripted right now. So instead of having this module increase the Raven's explosion velocity, uh, increase the Raven's explosion radius. Uh, by 41%, it's only going to increase it by about 20.5% because the Raven is at optimal plus fall off away. Uh, there's two reasons I point that out. First, because you do need to understand how range will affect your electronic warfare modules. Right? So the further out you are beyond optimal range, the less affect your sensor dampeners, tracking disruptors, and target painters will have, and the less likely your ECM jammers will work. It's not going to be zero, but it's going to be less likely. Uh, but additionally, you should be aware that tracking disruptors specifically only affect optimal and fall off on turrets, high slot turret weapons. They do not do anything to the optimal or fall off ranges of other electronic warfare modules. So you can't reduce the jamming range on a Blackbird by using tracking disruptors against it. That's not going to work. So these tracking disruptors will not interfere with other electronic warfare modules. Let's go on to the ships that are actually bonused for this. So obviously I'm using an Arbitrator Cruiser. Right? Uh, the Tech 1 frigates and the Tech 1 cruisers that are bonused for this... I mean, the ships are all Amarian, first of all. So for the Tech 1 Frigates, you've got the Crucifier. 7.5% bonus to Weapon Disruptor Effectiveness. And come to think of it, I don't think I looked this up ahead of time, so let's actually take a look at all of them. The Electronic Attack Ship, again, the Sentinel, only 7.5% bonus to Weapon Disruptor Effectiveness. 
Uh, so the electronic attack ships for the Amarians are bonus for capacitor warfare, which is a different sort of beast. I'm not covering capacitor warfare in this particular series of videos. I'll probably do videos about energy neutralizers and Nosferatu's later. Uh, but if we're looking at just tracking and guidance disruption, the Arbitrator, again, 7.5% bonus to weapon disruptor effectiveness per level of Amar Cruiser. And if I look at the Amarian Recon ships, the Curse and the Pilgrim also only have 7.5% bonus to weapon disruptor effectiveness per level of a Mark cruiser. So if it's really weapon disruptors that you care about, then again, just like with sensor dampeners and the Galente, with tracking dis with weapon disruptors and the Amarians, you're not going to do any better than the Tech 1 vessels. The Tech 2 vessels are uh, the Tech 2 vessels get extra bonuses to capacitor warfare rather than electronic warfare. Alright, so those are the bonuses involved. Uh, there are, of course, also skills that come into play. Uh, let's see, electronic systems. Yeah, here we go. Weapon destabilization. Alright. 5% bonus to the effectiveness of weapon disruptor modules per skill level. Alright. And, of course, there are also rigs for this. So, ship modifications, rigs, electronic superiority. I'm, look, I'm flying an arbitrator, so let's look at the medium-sized rigs. Um, ACM jammers. So, the medium particle dispersion projector improves the optimal range of ver all the di four different types of electronic warfare. ECM jamming, remote sensor dampeners, weapon disruptors, and target painters. But for increasing the effectiveness of weapon disruptors, uh, here we go. Medium tracking diagnostic subroutines one. This ship modification is designed to increase the effectiveness of fitted weapon disruptors at the expense of shields. All right. So this is the rig that will improve your weapon disruptors. Medium, if you're flying a cruiser, such as either the Arbitrator or the Curse or Pilgrim, or it, small if you are flying the Crucifier or Sentinel, or really any other frigate-sized hull. You can, of course, fit these rigs to ships that are not bonused for the modules in question, but it's not going to be as effective as using it on the ships that are actually bonused for the modules in question. All right. So that covers weapon disruption. I'm Seamus Dunhu of Eve University. Thank you for watching.